Hi, I'm Jeff Teeter. I'm a systems engineer with the America Partners Organization. And today we'll be looking at Lab 7 of the Cisco Open SDN Controller Hands-On Lab, specifically looking at uh, the Model Explorer. So let me go ahead and bring up uh, the Open SDN Controller that we've been working with and uh, bring up the Model Explorer. And if you uh, remember, if you happen to watch the very first uh, Open SDN Controller overview, we talked a little bit, little bit about um, NetConf and Yang, and um, specifically, this is this model explorer is, is basically using Yang models. Uh, so, just for a refresher, Yang is it's a data data modeling language that models uh, NetConf con configuration data, uh, state data, remote procedure calls, and notifications. Um, the SDN controller uses Yang models to structure this data in a hierarchical fashion into modules and submodules and render REST APIs at runtime in the Model Explorer. Um, from here you can access your network's configurations and state data via REST API methods such as get and put and we'll take a look at that. Uh, but here is uh, uh, some different uh, models that uh, we can go into and, and get information. And uh, that's what we'll do. We'll do a couple different things. Um, lots of uh, different areas. Uh, we have the modules uh, listed here. Um, we have, uh, when you get to a specific model, there's different actions down here as far as showing the preview and uh, history. Um, request history and you can uh, set custom APIs. Uh, kind of the first task in this lab is just basically understanding um, how to use the um, um, the APIs. Uh, if you remember from one of the uh, previous labs we looked at the API documentation um, I'll go up here again and just remind you in case you wanted um, or if you had some questions that you wanted answered you can go ahead and, and hit the available APIs and it's going to bring up uh, the RESTConf documentation and this uh, basically is going to give you all the information on how the specific APIs work and that's obviously related to the Yang models so I just thought I would I would mention that um, so you can select any of the APIs and drill down uh, on the uh, sub-APIs in that documentation. Of course, we'll do that also uh, with the Model Explorer. Um, so one of the first things I want to do is go ahead and look at the network topology. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, and click this uh, uh, API model right here. And let's go ahead and expand it um, and look at the operational information and then look at uh, the actual network topology. Now, right now, you're not you're not seeing anything, uh, but we're we're basically just selecting the sub API model that we want to look at. Um, so you can do if you want to see what this uh, actually looks like, you you can hit the show preview, and this is if you were going to use um, like a Postman uh, to get the information. This is specifically what we, what you would send. Um, Obviously, if you're not on the same server, you need to input the uh, the correct IP address. Um, but this would go ahead and give you uh, the exact same information. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and actually send a get and uh, be able to get additional information on uh, the topology. And so as you can see, a lot of the information has been... Uh, already collected down here by hitting that get we've got all this information back as far as the ISIS um, you recognize obviously some of the IP addresses the 101010 and the 65223 and all of this information here and uh, again um, you can get a, a show preview and uh, see if I can 
get this. It basically uh, shows you all of the information that's basically displayed uh, below. Let me go ahead and click out of here. See if I can get that to go away. There we go. Let me go back to where we were before. So again, I was on the uh, network topology um, and then operational network topology right here and get, okay. So on the topology list, um, you can either scroll through here and pick the one that you want, or you can also hit the show all list items, and it'll give you uh, the different options that you can actually look at. It basically brings up the different uh, topologies that it's uh, aware of or, or can uh, be aware of. So let's go ahead and hit uh, topology flow one. And then um, hit the display topology. Let's go back up here and hit display topology. And this basically gives us all the information, kind of displays the topology of the OpenFlow network uh, that we built in, in uh, the lab a couple labs ago. And if you want, you can highlight over it as, as you remember, uh, the MAC addresses for the host devices are, are related. So host five, its MAC address is five and this will be switch 5, uh, 4, and this should have a MAC address of 4, switch 3, uh, the host should have a MAC address of 3, and all the way down, right? So it seems to be pulling the correct information. So let's go ahead and exit out of, exit out of there, and um, let's go ahead and look at the link state topology. So we can go down here again, and we could either collect uh, click here or we can scroll over and see where link state is and uh, here it is and then go ahead and hit display topology and so now we're giving uh, topology with uh, the link state information or basically the IS, IS information uh, which uh, gives you the node information uh, the autonomous system uh, the router ID uh, all of that uh, all of that information so it's useful. You can get uh, a lot of uh, different information if you're interested in. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and basically we've been using it to get information. Let's go ahead and, and use a model explorer to actually um, uh, send a configuration. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, let's go to uh, let's go to open let's try open daylight uh, inventory. right here and let's expand it um, to configuration let's go to nodes node ID okay and in um, the API operations field uh, let's go ahead and type openflow1 And let me see. Hold on a second. On the node list, now that's popped up here, let's click a plus. Okay, and on the node list, enter OpenFlow1 again, 
So we're naming basically the open flow switch one, right? And scroll down to uh, the table. We're just basically setting some things that we can uh, match on. And uh, on the table list, uh, ID is zero. Since that's the table that we've used. And let's go ahead and see if we can um, just show preview of what we're doing here. So we have a configuration right here uh, that we're going to be sending basically to OpenFlow 1. And what we're doing is uh, we have this uh, flow. Uh, obviously that we created earlier and we're matching on this and then uh, this is the actual flow that actually drops that packet uh, between host 1 and host 5 so this is what's describing that and now what we're going to do since we have it completely described we have that flow described what we're going to do is hit delete and this will delete the flow we created in the in the earlier lab so let's go ahead and and click delete and then scroll up to the top here and it says a request was sent successfully so um, let's first of all see if that flow still exists in the OpenFlow manager uh, so we'll go back uh, let's see OpenFlow manager and go to uh, flow management and uh, if you remember before we could find the flow uh, just by looking at the at the ID um, don't see it. Let's also look at the flow name. So it appears to be gone at least from the uh, SDN controller. Uh, it doesn't appear. So let's go back and see uh, about uh, ping, if we can now ping. Probably what's going to happen is at first yeah, at first uh, nothing's able to ping from um, host one because basically we deleted some flows and so what's happening is the packets being sent to the controller um, and probably what's going to happen is it'll uh, basically the first few pings will air out and then when we do it again uh, they should come back uh, since we have deleted uh, that one flow so we'll do that a couple times and that's exactly what happened so now that flow that was dropping the packets uh, is gone and uh, it's allow uh, pings to go ahead and go through there um, so uh, with that lab we were able to use uh, the model explorer not only to go ahead and actually look at data um, but we were able to actually uh, make a configuration change. And in this case, we we're able to delete a flow that was dropping traffic uh, that we had uh, configured in a previous lab. Now the next lab that we'll be doing, Lab 8, is uh, a pretty interesting lab. It's actually working with NetConf and we'll be mounting routers uh, to the OpenSDN controller and being able to generate, the, uh, generate APIs on the fly. It's a uh, pretty powerful lab, not too long, but it's uh, very interesting what the implications are for uh, networking in the future. So I look forward to that lab.